first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is a special privilege for me to be here. My association with TIFR goes a long way. In early 70s, I used to come here. I started my career in the U.S. designing digital switching systems in 65. And I had vaguely heard of TIFR efforts through IEEE transactions. Names like Dr. Pitke, Dr. P.V.S. Rao, Professor Menon were familiar to me then as a young man. And I came to TIFR then and connected with some of these leaders, thought leaders in digital communications. These interactions continued. And over a period of time, I developed a very special personal relationship with Dr. Pitke. So when we set up CDOT, and I'll tell you a little bit about CDOT later on, we took entire team that Dr. Pitke had as part of our core team to build foundation. So on one hand, we had a team from Dr. Pitke, Chandrasekhar and his team of about 10, 15, and we took a team from Mr. Mimamsi at TRC. These 30 people at CDOT gave us the foundation to build a team of about 400 and then ultimately products and systems and software and services and all that. So I'm delighted. I'm thankful to TIFR for all the support you all have given us in the past. And I'm delighted to be back to see your paintings again. It is almost like an art gallery. So I'm traveling this time because of the CDOT celebrations with my wife, my daughter, and my daughter-in-law. And I told them, I said, come to TIFR. I know you'll be bored with the lecture, but you will enjoy the paintings. So they are here, and I'm delighted that they are with me here. CDOT was set up 25 years ago as a bypass to Indian telecom department to essentially develop digital switching systems in 36 months for 36 crores using three to 400 Indian young talent. The idea was conceived in 1974 published in an IEEE transaction in 1975, July. And finally, in 1980, I had an opportunity to meet Mrs. Gandhi and give her a presentation on the concept of telecom as an instrument of nation building. The thesis was that information communication technology is going to be critical in the future. We have the young talent and we can build a broad base for software without investing a lot of money. And this in turn could give us foreign exchange. <clears throat> and at the presentation, there were all kinds of political people, entire cabinet of hers. And from 80 to 84, we took three, four years to crystallize this idea. In the process, Dr. Pitke, Mr. Mimamsi, and others were sent by the government to come check me out, saying, this guy looks weird. Is he really weird? <clears throat> so they came to Chicago, spent about 11 days there. And in the process, we all connected, clicked, and together, we built the plan, we executed on the plan, we had resistance at some point, and ultimately, the basic idea of indigenous development, focus on access, rural connectivity, 
digitization of network, and all of these themes were ultimately implemented. Science and technology in India has been the key to the progress we have made in the last 60 years. During independence or after independence, our founding fathers really understood the value of higher education and science and technology. They decided to invest substantially in building institutions of higher learning. We had very few universities then, so we started building lots of universities. New laboratories, CSIR, agricultural research, medical research, TIFRs and you know other sort of examples, atomic energy. And all that we have done in the last 40, 50 years, whether it is to do with Green Revolution or our space program, defense research, telecom, dairy development, is really a tribute to Indian science and Indian scientists. We all know we could have done a lot more. We all know the challenges we have today in science and technology. We all know that we need to spend more. But at the same time, we also know that what we are spending is really not giving us the kind of returns we want. I don't want to go into all the problems. But earlier, I was going to talk more about science and technology challenges and opportunities, which I'll cover. But I'm going to change a little bit because when we had tea upstairs, we got into a little hot debate and discussion and everyone thought I should share those ideas with the group. It is indeed connected with science and technology and education, but in a different way. The basic concern is the financial crisis that the world is going through and has gone through in the last year, year and a half. Everyone is trying to fix it by pumping more money, spending more, and I'm one of those few who believe that this crisis is not fixable. It is not necessarily a financial crisis. I'm not an economist. I'm not a great scientist. So don't take me too seriously. But I'll tell you based on my guts that the undercurrents are very different from what you see on the surface. Right after World War II, U.S. systematically decided to set up institutions and infrastructure to keep U.S. dominance in science and technology and financial sector. World Bank, IMF, United Nations are classical examples of the organizational structures. WTO, WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization, all of these were systematically set up by U.S. as part of a larger design to keep U.S. dominance intact. As a result, dollar has remained strong, U.S. has prospered, but in the process, 250 million people in the U.S. have sucked most of the global resources. 50% of the world energy is used in the U.S. You know the data on carbon emission. And the list can go on and on. However, in the process, several things happened. Decolonization, led by Mahatma Gandhi and others, really put close to a billion people into the mainstream of increasing aspirations. Who would have thought in 1946 